Beans, 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 beans. Aloha, I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain and maintain optimum health. Today's video, it's a fun, but a super useful one. It's all about beans and gas. We've all heard about it, and maybe we've even experienced personally how beans could cause us to be bloated or gassy. Sometimes, shh, this can be a really embarrassing problem. So embarrassing, in fact, that people decide they never want to eat beans. Well, my friends, that, I must say, is a very poor decision. Beans and legumes are an important part of the Mediterranean diet, which has been found to protect against heart disease, dementia, cancer, and other chronic illnesses. Beans, in fact, are the only single food that has been linked to a longer lifespan. In this study, legume consumption was the most important predictor of survival in people age 70 and older. So we really should try to get beans in our bodies every single chance we get. What do we do then if we are one of those people who every time we eat a bean, we get super gassy and bloated? Well, lucky for you, I have got seven tips to help you combat this problem. Before we get into that though, let's talk about exactly why beans cause digestive issues. We can blame it on two things, fiber and oligosaccharides, which are a certain resistant starch found in beans. We don't have the enzymes to process oligosaccharides, but guess what? our gut bacteria do. So these oligosaccharides travel to the large intestine where our gut bacteria digest them, ferment them, and release gas in the process. Oh, and one more thing to cover before we get started. The medical word for gas or farting is flatulence. Flatulence. You'll hear that word a few times when I talk about scientific papers that were reviewed. The connection between beans and flatus was first described in the scientific literature in 1966 when a paper was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition titled, quote, Effect of Bean Diets on Concentration of Carbon Dioxide in Flatus, quote. The connection between beans, oligosaccharides, and flatus was described one year later in 1970. The oligosaccharide content of dried beans ranges from 25 to 50 milligrams per gram. Scientists soon found that oligosaccharides, in addition to causing the intestinal issue, have health benefits. Oligosaccharides, in fact, have been hypothesized to promote colon health, increase longevity, and decrease colon cancer risk. So, back to the useful, important tips, something we can actually put into action. Here we go. Seven ways we can decrease the bean farts. Number one, start slowly. Beans contain fiber, and if we're not used to having fiber in our diet, our GI tract has difficulty adjusting, and we can get problems. This 2011 study published in Nutrition Journal titled Perceptions of Flatulence from Bean Consumption Among Adults in Three Feeding Studies took a group of subjects and fed them a half a cup of beans daily for eight or 12 weeks. Participants were part of three separate but similar clinical trials designed to investigate the effects of daily bean consumption on markers of heart disease risk. By the way, all three of those studies showed significant reductions in total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, concentration in the time frame studied. So tip, if you're wanting to lower your total cholesterol or your LDL cholesterol, eat more beans. Anyways, back to beans and gas. Most of the study participants reported that bloating and gas symptoms started to decrease by week three and continued to decrease between weeks three and eight. The study concluded that Flatulence will decrease over time if bean consumption is continued, and that the nutritional attributes of beans and the diet outweighs the potential for transitory discomfort. So, moral of the story, start slow and increase gradually depending on how you're feeling. Number two, try a variety of beans to see which ones you tolerate best. Some people can tolerate one type of beans and not really tolerate other types. There's some studies discussing oligosaccharide content in different beans, which could be helpful when determining which beans may work best for you. In the study, for example, researchers found that yellow split beans contained the highest amount of oligosaccharides, therefore theoretically having the highest potential for causing flatulence and diarrhea. They then found that garbanzo beans or chickpeas had the lowest amounts. 
It's important to remember though that every person is different. It'd be a good idea to be a bit scientific and keep a food journal, recording the type of beans you eat and the amount of flatulence that results for you. Honestly, this strategy of keeping a food journal is a good idea for anyone who suffers from GI issues. Number three, soak your beans. Soaking your beans is actually a little controversial. There's one camp that will tell you soaking decreases digestive issues, and there's another camp that says, yeah, that's true, but soaking also decreases nutritional value of your beans. Soaking prior to cooking has been shown in some studies to cause a decrease in those gas-producing oligosaccharides. The worst thing you could do is soak your beans, then cook the beans in the same water they were soaked in. Studies show this does not decrease oligosaccharide content at all. It's worse than not even soaking the beans. So how long do you need to soak the beans before seeing this effect? Well, there's some studies that conclude you need to soak them for 12 hours minimum to get the best effect. Most people though say to soak at least eight hours or overnight. Number four, soak and or cook your beans in alkaline water. It may sound complex, but it can be easily done by adding a tiny amount of baking soda to the water, and studies show this decreases oligosaccharide content. It's best to add one teaspoon per cup of dried beans you're cooking. Just know, this will make your beans much softer, even mushy, and they'll cook in about half as much time. If that's what you're going for, great. Otherwise, one of these other options may be better for you. Number five, sprout your beans. I know, I know, this takes time, but it may be worth it. This study showed that germinating beans and then soaking beans are the methods that are the most successful in reducing oligosaccharide content. So how do we germinate? Well, we soak for nine hours and then we put them in a sprouting tray or in a sprouting jar. We rinse the beans twice daily. You do this for about 96 hours to get the best effects. I know, it takes time, but it may be worth it if you're having major GI issues from eating beans, just because it's one of the most effective at reducing gas. Number six, cook your beans with kombu. With what, you might say? Kombu. It's a seaweed that can be bought at most health food stores, Asian stores, or online. Kombu, or Saccharina japonica, has alpha-galactosidases. That's the enzyme that breaks down oligosaccharides, the enzyme we don't have. If you're a fan of canned beans, some companies sell their beans after cooking in kombu. I've got no affiliation with this company, but Eden Foods is one brand that cooks their black beans with kombu. There's some other additives that have been passed down from generation to generation in certain cultures, and these reportedly decrease the gas potential of beans. Things like that Indian herb, asafoetida, I can't even say it right, asafoetida. <laughs> the German herb, epasote, cumin, and ginger. Add them if you like, but there's no real scientific evidence they work. Last but not least, number seven. Take an over-the-counter product like Beano. It's basically alpha-galactosidase, that enzyme that breaks down oligosaccharides, the enzyme we don't have. Research shows it does work when it comes to preventing gas from beans. This study from 1994 was a double-blind crossover study where they fed everyone meatless chili. One group was given Beano, alpha-galactosidase, and the other group was given a placebo. They found a significant decrease in gas in the group getting alpha-galactosidase. The study concluded that, quote, oral alpha-galactosidase solution is efficacious, at least in some patients, for the prophylaxis of gastrointestinal intolerance of oligosaccharides, quote. So there you have it. Most people should be able to tolerate beans after taking alpha-galactosidase. Okay, friends, so there are your seven highly effective ways to prevent gas and other GI issues after ingesting beans. In short, here they are summarized. One, start small and increase slowly. Two, try a variety of beans to see which ones you tolerate best. Three, soak your beans. Four, soak or cook your beans in baking soda. Five, sprout your beans. Six, cook your beans with kombu or buy canned beans cooked in kombu. Seven, take Beano or any other alpha-galactosidase when you eat beans. Trust me, it's worth it. Eating beans is such an important part of a healthy diet. I really hope this video helps you find a way to successfully incorporate more beans into your meals. We love hearing from you, so let us know what methods work best for you. Or if there's any tips I've left out of this video, I'm sure there are. I hope you found this information empowering, useful, and practical. 
Links to the references used in the video are in the video description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. Thanks again for watching everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and aloha.